What is going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are fixing this animation at the start, so we're now on idle. When we press on play, we have this going on, boom, crashing works so we can actually die with our Pingu. He has the death animation playing as well. And we have some more, so if we press play again, you now have the option to slide beneath this object. See how this actually affects the character controller. If you just have a look at the green capsule around the player, so this thing here, you're going to see that we shrink into a small bubble and then we go back. And this is what we're going to be doing today guys, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so we're going to start with this very very simple glitch we have here where the player, you know, he runs but he doesn't really run, so we're going to fix the animation basically. Very very simple fix, we're going to head over to the player, then let's open up the actual animator, double click on this, and we're going to see the animation state machine right in here. Um, so when we first start, when we first enter the game, let's actually be on idle. So I'll actually make a link in between entry to idle, make sure I right click on idle and then set this as the default layer. And then once this is done, I'm going to make another transition to run and make sure that I add a condition between these. So when the game starts, we're going to idle and then as soon as we set the trigger, a trigger that could be start game, then we're going to go ahead and start this run loop here. And then if at any time you decide to jump, then you can go from any state to jump. So let's go ahead and actually add this trigger. I'm going to click right here under parameters and then make a new trigger. This one's going to be start running. Simple trigger and it's actually going to be put on this transition right here. Make sure it has no exit time so we can cancel the idle at any moment. Then click on condition and start running. Okay, so since we're already here, let's go ahead and keep on uh, making a little bit of transition right here. We're going to need the def. So we're going to be implementing the def in this episode and also the slide. All right, so let's see. You can pretty much die at any time. So we're going to put that under any state. So at any moment, if you have a def trigger, which we can create right now, then you're going to be swapped over to the def animation. Add the condition right here, def. And once you're done with that, uh, once you're done doing the def animation, you can actually exit since we're not going to be using our player anymore in that environment. Now let's go ahead and do the slide animation as well. So I'm going to take slide right here, create a transition in between run and slide. Since you can't really slide from uh, you know this state, you can't slide from the dev state, you can only slide when you are running. So I'm going to create one from run to slide and then one from slide to run. This one is going to be controlled with a boolean since I don't really want to like I don't really want to have to make two triggers, so I'm going to be controlling this with a single boolean instead. At this moment, we still don't know how long the slide transition is going to be, so I'm going to create a single boolean. I call it sliding, and let's say if sliding is equal to true, then we can go there and then make sure we don't have an exit time as well. Same thing on the other end, so sliding no exit time and let's make sure it is on false. So it's going to go on slide and as soon as we pop our, you know, as soon as we tell our sliding boolean to go back to false, then it's going to go back to running without any animation time. All right, so to implement this, it is going to be fairly simple. As soon as we press start here, yeah, as soon as we tap, then we're going to send in that um, start running trigger that we put inside of the animator. So this trigger right here, so start running. Let's copy that head over to the player motor, which is open right here for me. And now we have the start running right here. We're going to say anim set trigger. And then let's send in the start running string. Just like this, we should have fixed our little problem we had. So at the beginning, he's just standing there, he's idle and then press and he's going to start running. So that gives us a little bit more uh, fresh control on the animation. That gives us a little bit more control on the animation. Now we need to be able to slide and also to die. So the sliding one is kind of complicated, but we should be able to get it done fairly quickly. So let's go over here. Let's go under the player motor. Um, we need to actually go under the update and check if we are grounded. So down here, when we calculate the Y, let's actually check if we're grounded. If we are, then we have the option to jump or we have the option to actually slide. So I'll do it else if right here. Else if mobile input dot instance dot swipe down 
If we're swiping down and we're grounded, then let's go ahead and slide. Now for the whole sliding part, we need to do multiple things. We need to actually shrink the character controller, we need to move its um, center, we need to actually set a boolean, we need to set the trigger inside of the animation. We have to do a lot of things, so I just type in start sliding right here. Now this function, we're going to create it down below, so say over here, private void start sliding. And let's also create one for stop sliding right now, so private void stop sliding. When we do start, let's do anim set boolean, and we'll say sliding with a capital S is going to be equal to true. Let's take this line, head over here, paste it, and same thing, but we're going to say sliding is equal to false. Now, multiple things are going to be have like multiple things are going to have to be done in here, such as, like I said, I think we have to reduce the size of the character controller, just so it's a little bit more tiny. You can go beneath obstacle without triggering them. And uh, we're going to be looking at if we want to actually be able to cancel it out. But right now, let's just start sliding and let's just put something else a little bit later for stop sliding. I'll do an invoke just for testing purpose. After one second of sliding, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's the other way around. So you do stop sliding like this. And then after one second, let's call the stop sliding. So I'll actually just give this a try. Like I said, it's not something I want to leave like that in the code. I don't really like using invokes. And here he is. Now I'm going to go down, it slides, and it stops. This is only when I do a um, swipe down. And I wonder if I can still move. Yeah, I can still move. So maybe you'll want to actually cancel this out. But I actually don't want to be deciding on this just yet. Today was all about making this score and also making sure we have a proper state machine. Okay, so in terms of the state machine, we have the jump, we have the slide. We're missing the def over here. So let's go ahead and we're going to leave them right here for now. But we're going to code or at least start coding the def condition of our player. So what's happening right here is that we have a character controller and character controller actually has a function to detect uh, when you're hitting something. Like you would go ahead and would say, if you were just using a standard game object, you could be doing a um, on collision enter or on trigger enter. But since we're using a character controller, this one has its own function called, I think it's on character controller hit so on actually it's on controller collider hit and it gives you a controller collider hit so it's the same exact thing as on collision enter but it works only for character controller in fact the on collision enter is not going to work um, on these type of colliders so once we're in here we're going to be looking for objects we enter collision with now let's say that we hit uh, well, first, let's take the tag. So hit game object tag. Let's say that the object we've hit has a tag of obstacle. Then in that case, we can go ahead and say, well, we died or we crash, basically. Then we can break. At all time, you're going to be hitting the floor. That would be like a object that has no tag. So you, you cannot be calling crash on any tags. You have to call it on the very specific one that are going to kill you. When we go ahead and we make our prefabs a little bit later on in the level generation uh, episodes, you're going to see that we're only going to be keeping a small portion of our object um, well, with this tag, basically, with the obstacle tag. So only when our player touches these very specific, we're going to allow him to crash. Until then, we are going to be using uh, some preset that we put in the map. Uh, do we need anything else? We don't need anything else. Of course, we're going to need the crash function. So I'm going to go up here, do a private void crash. And this is, of course, when the player dies. And when the player dies, for now, what we could do is anim set trigger. Did we call it def or dead? I think we call it def. Let's double check real quick. Since we have it right here, it is called def, just like this. And if we trigger it while the game is playing, this is what happens. So we fall into that dying animation. Now, unfortunately, I just realized that if you do have a exit, then uh, you trigger the entry again, which is not something we want. So let's actually kill this right here, this 
transition. We don't want to have this transition anymore. And now if I hit play, we start running, we jump around, boom, we hit something, death, we just stop there, face down, and we are a little dead pingu. But we still keep on going because he doesn't know that, you know, it needs to die, basically. <laughs> um, so when we do trigger this thing, let's also do is running is equal to false, since we're not really running anymore. Okay, so we should have pretty much all we need. All we're missing right now to test this out is to have a real object in the scene that has the obstacle tag on it. So a game object that has the obstacle tag on it. We're going to actually create it real quick by, say, creating a cube, moving it ahead in the map, maybe 10 meters ahead. Or is that enough? Mm, we'll see. Let's just make it that wide. And then we'll change the tag. So at the top right here, change the tag for add a new tag, obstacle, save. Now when you create it, it's not actually set. You have to go back on the object and then set it manually. We have something like that. Now obviously we're going to, we're going to have to play with this uh, a little bit more because the, uh, the animation actually falls in front which uh, of course leaves our Pengu dead, but he's dead inside of the wall, which is kind of not useful at all. But as you can tell, our collider is still there. So we'll need some tweaking on this animation, but other than that, everything looks fine. And we can actually move on to another thing. Meanwhile, you can practice your sick Pengu skills. See that jump? Amazing jump. Alright, so next step, let's take this and actually bump it back up to say 1, that's going to give you 0.5, okay, so let's go for 1.5, and you should have 1 meter below the Pingu, let's give it a try so we see exactly how big this is compared to the Pingu, and as you can tell, his head should basically just hit this thing and then, boom, he dies. Right, so what we want to be doing here is make sure that we actually shrink this character controller, we shrink it in height, so this thing here. But if we do that, realize that um, <laughs> he's going to start falling, like he's going to go right about here and we won't see our Pingu anymore. So when we do shrink this thing, we also have to move the center. So right now we have a center that is at 0 0.5, it's perfect for what we need. Let's actually reset it so we can have a look. So we have a center that's at 0 0.5, but now since we're at 0 0.5 in height, we're going to need to do divided by 2 here, which means this is going to be our final collider. And at that point, when we're sliding, we can go beneath that and have no problem. So basically, when we're sliding, we, we're going to do a divided by 2 on the height and also a divided by 2 on the, the actual um, center here. To do that, we're going to go back right inside of the start sliding and the stop sliding. Let's do a controller dot height and can we actually set it? So let's see dot height. We have a set and get, so that's perfect. Let's do the same exact thing. So divided equal two. Can I do that? I think I can. Amazing stuff. Now for the center, we can do the exact same thing, but since it's a vector three, we'll have to reset it. Um, so let's go ahead and do controller center is equal to a new vector two. Oh, sorry, vector three. Then we do controller dot center dot x and then controller dot center dot y divided by 2 and then controller dot center dot z and that should be it let's copy over those two lines over here and just swap the divided by 2 by times 2 and divided equal by times equal okay so let's give this a try see if we can actually pass beneath this so that's without the sliding, hits its head, it's dead, and now with the sliding, that's amazing, so it did work. Very, very cool stuff. Let's actually have a look, like a nice angle on this thing. Cool. Alright guys, so this is actually where we're going to be ending this episode. Um, next one, like I said, we should be tackling the menu at the top, we should be adding stuff to the menu, or we're going to be adding a funny, very nice slide behind the player, so some kind of trail. Uh, since we're going to be walking on the snow, basically, we'd like to have some effect behind the character, that would be very, very cool. So it's either one of the two, just look forward to it. 
if you want to actually proceed with the tutorial click on the video right now on the screen it's going to take you to the next one and also if you click this link instead of clicking any other links or if you go like directly on the channel helps me out for some reason so thanks youtube algorithm and uh, yeah, so click on this thing, check out the Patreon page, check out the Facebook page, check out all of these links that we have below in the description. Join us on Discord, join the conversation, we're there to help you guys. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.